Hi there and welcome to the video. Let's create a new project and choose the FB event image option, which gives us a 1080p canvas, which is a great starting point. Now drag the image file into the photo piece screen to load it up. There is of course a download link in the description box for this image. I'm just going to enlarge the image so it fills the canvas completely. So we have no white gaps. Now create a duplicate of this layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We now need to isolate the subject on this top layer. I'm going to use the pen tool for this, but you can use whatever tool or method you like, such as the lasso tool. It doesn't have to be a perfect cutout as we will be outlining it afterwards, but just try and keep within the rough confines of the silhouette. I'll speed this part up a bit so you don't get too bored, but it really didn't take me long, even with the pen tool. Right, now I'll go to the Paths panel and rename it. And then I'll turn it into a live selection by holding Control or Command and then left clicking on the path icon. With the selection now live, create a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon. We now have a reasonable looking cutout, but the edges are a little bit pixelated, so we can increase the mask feather slightly to help smooth things over a little. I found for this a value of about 0.7 looks about right. But that will depend on the particular image. Let's just rename these layers to keep organised a little bit. Good practice as always. So just to recap, we now have an isolated version of the subject sitting above the original image. Now double click on the cutout layer in the empty area next to the text. This will open up the layer style window. Here we can add an outline stroke and even a slight outer glow to help separate the subject from the background. White is a good choice here, but just make sure the position is set to outside. This will just make sure it doesn't eat into any of the pixels. Now we're going to create a dark outer glow, but we need to keep it quite subtle though because it's just going to add a little bit of dimension later when we add some text, but you'll see what I mean in a couple of minutes. Just look at my settings and just see the kind of things I'm doing and follow suit. It doesn't have to be exact, but you get the idea. Quite a subtle glow, but it will really make a difference. We can now blur the layer behind to refine the overall look. I'm going to use lens blur here for something different, but any type of normal blur should be fine. And if you're using the lens blur, simply just increase the radius value until you get what you're looking for. I like that, so I'll click OK. Now we're going to add some text. So open the character panel to view text properties. I've already pre-selected a font that I like for this called Alpha Echo. Now press T for the type tool and click down on the canvas to start typing. You can select the size of the font to taste of course and also changing the tracking and leading values will help adjust the spacing between characters and the lines of text. For example, I'm going to reduce the leading value to bring the lines of text closer together which I think looks a lot neater for this thumbnail. I'll now change the font colour to white for greater visibility against the background. There we go. Now enter the layer style screen for the text by double clicking on the side of the layer as, as usual. Now click on drop shadow and set the spread value to 100. If you change this to 100 and get the angle and the distance dialed in, you can get almost fake 3D look on the text. 
Notice how as soon as I lower the distance and size, it gives it this really neat effect due to the spread value being so high, it kind of offsets it in an interesting way. So click OK when you're happy. Now to make the message on the thumbnail really pop, I'm going to change the colour of the word ever to really make it stand out. So with the text tool live, simply drag a selection over the word and in the character panel, click on the colour swatch icon to change. It's good to pick a colour already featured in the image for continuity, something eye-catching. So I'm going to pick a pink tone from this drinking straw and just boost the saturation a little to strengthen the colour. Now that really pops off and grabs the viewer's attention. I'm just going to enlarge the text slightly so there's a little bit of overlap between the text and the isolated subject. You'll see why in a moment. And now drag the text layer under the cutout layer to create more interest and depth. This is why we did the outer glow a bit earlier on, just so it helped with the separation between the white outline and the white text. This is now generally a good time to reposition or slightly enlarge the cutout if needed to help with the composition. Now, to create a border around the thumbnail, select the rectangular marquee tool, the shortcut of that is M, and drag the selection over the whole canvas. Now add a colour fill adjustment layer, doesn't matter what colour it is at the moment as we're just going to use it as a guide for the border. OK, now to actually make the border, enter the layer style screen and change the fill amount to zero. It is important to use the fill here and not opacity otherwise it won't work correctly. For the border, click on stroke and set the position to either centre or inside. Select the size, which is the thickness of the border in this case, and choose the colour. I'm just going to go with black here, but feel free to get creative with your own colour choices at this stage. An option here for an even more 3D look is to drag the border layer underneath the cutout layer. And as you can see, it makes the subject really jump out of the frame. These little details really make a difference and they help your thumbnails to stand out above the competition.